Możesz mnie aresztować. Proszę, wypuści moją córkę. Idź z matką. What's going on guys? Bart here with Tully Television and today we're going to be getting into another comic book review. Um, we will be getting into some uh, other stuff soon but uh, being we hadn't uh, gotten any fresh comic books lately and then getting some I kind of wanted to review the ones that I've been enjoying. And today I want to get into the resurrection of Magneto number one, uh, entitled The Lightning Path, written by Al Hewing. Artist is Lucian, Luciano uh, Fe Feccio, V-E-C-C-H-I-O. Uh, colorist is Dave Curell, and the cover for this particular issue is Stefano. Uh, Casey and Jesus Aparato, A B U T A B U R T O V is his last name. This is the cover that I had gotten. And to review, because we don't really go through uh, X Men Red here, um, we kind of concentrate on some other titles. But during the Avengers vs. Eternal story, Magneto had suffered a great injury. And the only reason why he was able to keep himself alive was because he was able to control the metals in his blood uh, to continue to pump his heart until the final mission was done and then he finally passed away. Uh, due to those injuries in Avengers vs. Eternal's storyline. That was about a year and a half ago now at this point. 
maybe two years, depending on uh, the timing when this finishes and when that event happened. But basically, uh, we're at a point where we're ready to bring back Magneto. And I'm going to run through the synopsis real quick of this issue, and then I'm going to show you some pages of art. Because uh, I kind of just want to be able to concentrate and fully explain what's going on here. Um, there was a place created for mutants when they died and they wanted to stay dead called the the waiting room in which then their souls would pick the path in which they want to live their out afterlife in, depending on their faith and what have you uh it seems like magneto when he came into this waiting room uh had chosen a place uh that seems to not be where he exactly wants to be, but uh, we're going to see the path he chose in the afterlife, I guess, during this uh, during these issues, uh, this series, so to speak. Um, and then we have Storm then deciding to go retrieve Magneto's soul from the afterlife and bring him back alive, even though he didn't want to necessarily uh, be brought back. Um, she goes to David Bashir, Blue Marvel, to help her uh, talk to this uh, to this fellow called. I want to make sure I get his name right because it's. Um, Tarn, Tarn, um, Tarn had, uh, suffered a death by the hands of Magneto, and then when he found out what, uh, Storm wanted to do is when he tried to prevent her from, uh, going, uh, Storm was able to continue going, uh, to search for Magneto's soul with the help of her ancestor, uh, we see it, um, Storm going through and seeing the Dominion, and then she finally light, lines up where Magneto was at. And the ancestor, ancestor of Storm explained how uh, with magic being used and stuff like that, you have to look for the symbols and uh, go from there. So, I'm going to go through some of the art here. Like, for instance, in this opening page, opening panel, uh, the fact that there's five helmets here, the ancestor touched on uh, talking about how the number five is an important uh, number in magic. We wake up to Storm having a nightmare of Magneto pulling her, and she seems to have a new love interest that isn't like anyone important. It's not even really a character that was introduced before like that or really had any great spotlight. And he seems to have children. So Storm is really picking up a life there on a, co a Croa, um, finding love, finding uh, her place after the Civil War there that happened and, and things like that. This is when uh, she comes across David Brashear here, who is trying to uh, find a way to break Orcus down. And that's when Storm requests him to bring her to the afterlife. Because he's, he's so smart, he's able to get you there without necessarily killing you. And she was surprised that he was so willing to do it. Uh, this is the initial scene where she, uh, comes across, uh, there's six stones, seven, but, uh, there's Tarn and different paths you can choose in your afterlife, and as she's explaining to him what she wants to do, he refuses her and changes into the genomic 
mage. If I'm mis I'm probably mispronouncing that word. G E N O M I C Mage and it turns into this big uh, creature in which she's able to defeat and then come across her ancestor here explaining uh, what's laying ahead for her and everything. And I swear to God, man, they try to make Miss Marvel work all the time. I like the actress who plays her, but I've never been a big Miss Marvel fan. I'm sorry, like that. I actually prefer the MCU version. Um, well, uh, they're doing when they redoing the Ultimate Universe, which the way they did Black Panther is good. But I'm getting off a topic here. Here we see Storm going through uh, her memories of Magneto going from uh, a, a dangerous enemy to a vital ally, uh, um, a friend, if you will, uh, comrade in arms, and a level of respect there for both of them to each other. Uh, one thing Storm remembers really realizing that Magneto has a humanity is when he thought Kitty Pride was dead by the hands of himself and realizing that he may have killed um, a mutant of Jewish descent and to realize that maybe he wasn't any better than the Nazi, uh, the Yahtzees. Damn it. Don't shadow ban me. Um, the Yahtzees, and so that's when really Storm was able to see a side of Magneto, uh, really him quite, that he has a conscience, he has a heart, but he's also a warrior. So she really, uh, gets more information than her ancestor leads her to the way we see her following through. Uh, this is how the, the Dominion looks, basically. And if you don't know who the Dominion is, it's the original Nathaniel Ex Essex, uh, where the sinister clones were uh, come from. She's still... It, it, it's a very meta trip, so to speak. She's doing a lot of uh, exposition. We see her in her various forms over the years, uh, basically uh, going through her mindset when it comes to this and why she's doing what she's doing for Magneto and for her people. And this is the final panel, very similar to Magneto 5, Storm Crowns lay in the ground and she basically shows up where Magneto is at. And then the real last panel here, Magneto on some molten lava here, I guess, uh, seems to be blind and screaming out in agony or for somebody or something. And, um, I think that this series is going to be pretty good based off of this first issue. Um, I enjoyed the art to it. I enjoyed the introspective view of Storm and where she's at at this point from the fall of X to the fall of House of X, uh, where her story is going to go next. Uh, my only major complaint about uh, the story in general, and it's more of not necessarily a dig at this particular series, but in a general sense of comic books, um, no one can ever truly stay dead, I guess, and that becomes a little uh, monotonous sometimes now, too, where there's a shock death or a death that was done in a heroic way. And then it's taken away a couple of years later because uh, we don't know what to do without Magneto. We don't know what to do without Xavier. We don't know what to do without Wolverine. 
or this character or that character. And I get that uh, certain big events happen that, you know, need to happen to shape the story that comes next. But I'd really like to see a story... Like, this is two mutant titles since the fall of X happened that a mutant died and then is able to come back. And that has been Miss Marvel. And now it's looking like Magneto's coming back. And, uh, you know, when does the death really mean something in comics? But... That's just an old man complaining here on uh, the YouTubes. You let me know down below what you think of the story and what you think about comic book deaths in general. Do you think that they're overdone, underused, uh, not used enough? You know, you let me know down below. I think it's overdone at this point. Oh, they're dead, and then uh, a year later they're alive, and then dead again and alive, and it's like... Uh, okay, I guess. There's nothing else that they can go through. Uh, but yeah, that's my thoughts. And until next time, peace, suckers.